This is Bob Barker, and you're listening to Animal House Radio with Aaron and Dr. Mike. Now, do you believe that on a personal level, that they do have that sixth sense? Oh, there's no question about it. I think they sense apparitions. Um, people have, um, have said, I've looked at my pet. It was looking at something. I couldn't see it. Later on, they would feel a ghostly feeling. And I think anim- animals are very, very sensitive. My mother, her side of the family was very superstitious about a bird in a house. They always felt that if there was a bird in the house, someone was going to die. And oh, wow. every once in a while, when a bird would get through, whether it would come down a chimney, f- chimney flue or through a door if somebody opened it, Sure enough, within a day or two, somebody in that family always died. So they were very superstitious about that. Yeah, it's, it's kind of the, uh, once you believe in it, it could happen as well. So it's, it's one of those things, too. Uh, Lisa has one more question for you, and I'm sure. uh, just going to... Well, it's more of a comment, just um, with dogs, as Aaron had touched on, and the color of their eyes or seeing the whites of their eyes, often if a dog is aggressive or um, fearful they'll show you the whites of their eyes or how they look at you and turn their eyes away. It can be a fear aggression that they're going to turn on you. So perhaps over the you know, centuries, people have learned that, and that's one of the symbols that it shows. Well, in the old days, too, on the battlefield, they all st- all, always used to say, don't shoot until you see the whites of their eyes. That's and, true. you <laughs> know, I, I just think it has something to do with creatures, humans, animals that under stress, or anger or tension, um, you know, most of the white in the eyes tends to uh, tends to show. Tends to come out. Now, tell me, tell us a little bit about your pets that you have, just uh, the ones that you have at home. She's got a yellow lab, KC the yellow lab. KC the yellow and lab. I've had her about two years now. And she's she's two years old, or she's yep. uh, two years old. Beautiful. Okay. I've just I've liked uh, labs all my life. Yeah. I started off years ago with a chocolate lab, and then. Uh, she had 15 puppies, and we kept the black lab that she had, and uh, both of them lived uh, a very long time. Of course, they passed on. But, yeah. um, that's, a, that's a huge litter, 15 puppies. Oh, it's unbelievable. Like two, more puppies. than two times the regular yeah, size. Wow. So Casey is two now. Does she have any brothers or sisters or anything? Any anybody that she plays around with a lot? It's not not with me. I mean, <laughs> she's got brothers and sisters that have all been uh, sold, I guess, from the breeder. Yeah, all over the place. So, what is uh, George Norrie's advice to people out there who who want to get a pet and may live a, a lifestyle like you, um, or may live different lifestyles out there? What is your recommendation to them? Because you know, a George Norrie recommendation is a very good recommendation. So, well, what do you recommend to the pet world? Number one, if you have the ability to stay with your animal, stay at home. Uh, you'll find never a better companion and just take care of your animal feed it right make sure it gets to the vet and just take care of it like you would a little kid or a baby in my particular case Aaron and Lisa I travel a lot I'm between Los Angeles and St. Louis quite a bit so I have a caretaker who comes and takes the dog and takes care of her while I'm away and the important thing is, is just make sure whatever you do, you just take care of the animal like you would yourself. Yeah. George, I really appreciate you taking your time to call the program tonight for the special edition of The Sixth Sense and, and a lot of interesting things you've said. And uh, you know what? Everybody out there who's listening worldwide, listen to Coast to Coast because this is just touching on some of the issues that this man, George Norrie, and Coast to Coast talk about. And look at your PVRs. Look at uh, email sci-fi and say, hey, when is the unexplained going to be back on TV because we want to see it. George, thank you so much. Continue the great work on Coast to Coast AM and the unexplained on the Sci-Fi Network. All of you and to your audience have a great holiday and Merry Christmas. You too, my friend. Take care. George Norrie on the phone with us. Thank you very much to George Norrie at Coast to Coast AM. What a great guy. Yeah, he, is, he is one of my idols when it comes to radio. He is professional. His program has amazing content. And sometimes at night, I stay up there and I listen to 2, 3, 4 in the morning because his issues that he brings up, it's, it makes you think. And we, we want to take your phone calls. Tonight's topic is we can uh, have a little uh, music to put us in the mood. Oh, yeah. Is this isn't fact or fiction time, Lisa. It's not fact or fiction at all. This is just unsolved mysteries because we want to know your ghost story with your animal. We all have them. 416 416- 785-0680 416-785-0680 or if you're a little bit shy info at animalhouseradio.com now 
Earlier on last week, I had written, I, excuse me, I wrote an article in the, the 24-hour newspaper, Dr. Mike and I, and we talked about a simple question that we got. And the question was, can dogs hear certain things? And when I found out what I found out, it kind of shook me to the ground there a little bit, to be honest with you. Dogs have 19 muscles in each ear. Okay? Now, to put that in perspective, humans have two muscles in each ear. Okay? We, we only use one of those muscles. Okay? Dogs use all 19 muscles in their ears. Cats use 15 muscles in each ear. Right, Lisa? Yes. And also, though, what's interesting, we think of our dogs as having great hearing. Cats can hear one octave higher than even dogs, and they have a greater sense of hearing than humans. As well, um, cats within three inches, if they're within three feet away from something, within three inches they can locate that animal. That's why cats are such great hunters of wow. small things, mice, or your house cat might you know, get a fly flying through the air. Yeah. So. You know, I've seen my cat jump. You, well, I've seen, <laughs> when, when I was growing up, I had my cat, Kimmy, and she would jump around, go go crazy and see things. And, um, and now, right, were they all there? Were well, they well, real flies or were they ghost flies? We don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know. And currently, my uh, I'm watching my father's cat, Dukester. This cat's crazy. Um, but my girlfriend, Deborah, her, and by the way, Deborah, she, she took a tumble today down the TTC. Poor girl. Well, I, I, hope, hope, I, I hope she's doing better. I hope she's doing she, better, too. She was upset. <laughs> Supposedly, she took like eight people down with her on the stairs and caused this big uh, ruckus. And, uh, y- you know, she took eight people down and, I don't know, there was uh, a bloodbath. And, uh, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, no, I'm just kidding. She's doing okay. She's <laughs> she's hanging out and taking care of her of her, of her wounds. But she's got a great cat named DeBombs. I love uh, DeBombs. Oh, you met DeBombs? Now, I, I think DeBombs the, the must be, I think... If there is such a thing as reincarnation in pets, because this is an interesting topic, reincarnation within pets. Usually we talk about reincarnation in people, and people come back to be pets. Um, but this cat is like a dog. And when I mean like a dog, it is like a dog. It just it sleeps in the same way a dog sleeps. It doesn't want to go anywhere. It just it's like a dog. It is the weirdest thing. It is the laziest cat I know. If you can think of Garfield, she's a great cat. I love this cat. DeBob's is amazing. But I think that the bombs in a former life used to be a dog, and said, "Hey, you know what? To hell with it. I'm I'm, I'm going to be a, I'm going to be a cat right now." And she's an orange tabby female, which is extremely rare. And Very I remember rare. once meeting Mike, and when, when I first met Mike, he, and he said to me, he "says I've only seen one, uh, excuse me, two or three female tabbies in, in his, uh, you know, 85 years of, of, <laughs> of being a vet. You know, Mike's 143 years old. Yeah, and you know, so the bobs is my first that I've seen." So really, it's quite rare, though. Kind of like um, calicos, the tricolors, almost always female. It, occasionally, it happens genetically male, but they're usually sterile. So if you find a male calico that isn't and sterile, sterile you sell know, it. You might be up onto something. <laughs> yeah, you get, get some money going. But you know, although we are overpopulated with cats, so I'm not going to uh, yeah. endorse. Cat no, <laughs> of course. Well, obviously, we need, we need to figure out a way to uh, control the pet population. Um, now, here's an interesting question. I just want to pose this out there. Uh, birth control obviously is out of the question for animals unless you do a spay or a neuter. Now, is there any way to reverse that process, to reverse a spay or to reverse a neuter? No. Um, in a spay, in cats and dogs, it's a full hysterectomy. So okay. everything's removed. And in males, the testicles themselves are removed, so there isn't that testosterone anymore. Okay. It's not like in male humans where things are cut or tied off. We take out the whole shebang. <laughs> you take everything out? We take everything. <laughs> huh. I wonder if... if but those... it's not painful. No, There's no, of course. Lot, under general anesthetic, yeah. pain control to go home, keep them comfortable. And you know what? It increases their lifespan, keeps them healthy. Yeah, and and obviously, once again, you you, you reduce the if if you have your uh, dog spayed or neutered before the age of female dog before the age of uh, a year, you can reduce the uh, risk of cancer by ninety nine percent, as as Mike always promotes on this program. Now, I want to read you uh, an email or a letter that we received, and I, and I, and I want to read this to you. Um, canine vision is even worse than human vision. Dogs are believed not to see in color. Well. They are believed to see in yellow and blue instead of black and white. No, I didn't know that, right? I had no idea. They don't see in black. Excuse me. They do not see in color. They, they, they see in yellow and blue, not black and white.